I feel bad for the guys over at NVIDIA PR and marketing. I really do. Not because of the recent three and a half gig GTX 970 fiasco, not because of the hours that I know they work based on when I get responses to my emails, and not because the hardware that it's their job to convince us to buy is particularly hard to sell most of the time. I feel bad for the NVIDIA guys because it has got to be hard to keep finding more and more creative ways to write reviewers' guides and product pages that exist just to communicate that this new thing we made is the world's fastest GPU again. Because yes, folks, they've done it again. This is the GTX Titan X, the, well, world's fastest GPU. Corsair H80i GT and H100i GTX all-in-one liquid coolers make your system run cooler and look better too. Click on this graphics card to learn more. Let's start with the specs. Under the hood of the Titan X, you'll find a GM200 GPU, the big brother to the Maxwell Architecture GM204 that powers the GTX 980 and 970. So you've probably guessed by now that the Titan X is also Maxwell based. But when I said big brother, I really meant Big. The Titan X packs a whopping 8 billion transistors running at a base clock of 1 gigahertz with typical boost speeds around 1075 megahertz, 3072 CUDA cores, 12 gigs of GDDR5 memory. Yeah, I said 12 gigs, although that'll be more relevant for computational applications and 3D rendering with large models than gaming for the foreseeable future, running at 7 gigahertz and connected via a 384 bit bus, just like the original Titan and Titan Black. And that's not the the only thing it has in common with the original Titan. I mean, I wonder whose job it is at NVIDIA to design the reference coolers. Does he actually do any work anymore? Because this one, with its copper vapor chamber, aluminum fins, and aluminum shroud looks just like the old one. I mean, maybe there was like an incident a couple of years ago where he like bumped into Jensen in the cafeteria and spilled soup down the front of his shirt. So they actually laid the guy off. And then in a fit of anger, he took the blueprints for their metal shroud stock cooler. So all they can do now is make slight tweaks to the color scheme every time, which, okay, no, sorry. I, I don't actually think that's what happened. And at any rate, the color scheme tweak is probably all that this excellent design needed to look even more awesome anyway, but I still wouldn't have been too disappointed to see a bit of a, a refresh with a brand new top of the line card. The good news though is that the looks of a graphics card should probably be the last thing you're considering when buying it and the Titan X has got it where it counts. Gen 3 PCIe 16X connectivity at the bottom, dual PCIe power connectors, one 6 pin and one 8 pin at the top, and a 6 plus 2 phase power delivery designed to handle the card's 250 watt TDP or 275 watt power limit with it set to 110% in your favorite overclocking utility. It's got two SLI connectors at the top to enable up to four-way configurations, which in my mind is probably the only way you're gonna get enough horsepower to justify the 12 gig frame buffer for gaming. And the rear IO takes a page from the rest of its Maxwell family members with DVI-I, HDMI 2.0 for up to 4K 60 Hertz displays, and triple DisplayPort 1.2 ports for 5K displays like Dell's Fancy Pants UP2715K that we checked out recently here, and surround 4K monitors. Oh yeah, and they're all compatible with G-Sync as well. And of course, the other new Maxwell features that will be making their way into games over the next couple of years are also present here. VXGI, NVIDIA's fancy voxel-based real-time lighting technology, MFAA, their handy-dandy and automatically applied through GeForce Experience anti-aliasing technique that delivers very similar results to MSAA at a smaller performance hit, and there's some new stuff like PhysX, which, okay, PhysX isn't new, but the CPU-based implementations went open source, which what? NVIDIA, what is this doing in my Titan X reviewer's guide? This supports the GPU paths of PhysX just fine. Moving on. Ah, you, uh, you want me to talk about VR features? That I can do. Even though gaming head-mounted display products like Oculus's Rift and HTC and Valve's Vive are coming 
later this year, whatever that means, NVIDIA is hard at work reducing the latency between the frame being rendered and displayed on your HMD to reduce motion sickness, including a new SLI mode that allows, presumably this works with two GPUs, one GPU to render the left eye image and the second to render the right eye image, dramatically improving performance. And the awesomeness in theory doesn't end there because we haven't even talked about overclocked performance of this beast. And for that, I will hand off to Luke, but I got a feeling this gonna be good. And it is good. This card slams the competition in terms of single GPU pure performance, and it was able to achieve clearly higher minimum, maximum, and average FPS in all the games we tested. If you're wondering about its 12 gigabytes of VRAM, well, Shadow of Mordor with Ultra Textures on was able to use about 6.4 gigabytes of the stuff, but we will need to push it even harder to see more utilization here. In terms of overclocking, this is a pretty interesting card. That 250 to 275 watt TDP results in a card that really pushes Nvidia's heatsink design. Under load, I was hitting around almost 400 watts from the wall in terms of power, and around 83 to 86 degrees Celsius with the fan on auto. So it's pretty hot, but that's not all. It's super power hungry as well. The first limit I hit was temperature. Shortly afterwards, after a little tweaking as well, I also hit power and voltage limits. And in the end, I was able to land somewhere around 1375 to 1393 megahertz. And Nvidia specs you to get around 1400 megahertz, so you may be able to get a little bit more out of your Titan X on your own. One of the big factors that may have played into my slightly lower clock speed is the room I was testing in was at a fairly balmy ambient temperature of 28 degrees Celsius. I'm really hoping someone makes a really beefy aftermarket cooling and power solution for this GPU. I would really like to see what the Titan X is capable of when it's not hitting voltage, power, and thermal limits all over the freaking place. Maybe hooking up to phase change could even be a little fun. In terms of price per performance, this may not be the best value card out there, if you, but if you want to just crush things with a single card, this may be the ticket. Let me know over on the forum if you'd like to see more Titan X videos and what they should be about. Maybe an SLI showdown against maybe dual 980s or maybe some sub-zero cooling with a phase change? I don't know, let me know. Anyways, back to you Linus. Speaking of cool things, or the forum, or whatever he was talking about, our friends over at Chiro have recently released a couple of new Dan board products that look pretty Dan compelling. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's awful. Uh, these are the Danboard Block 3000 and 4200 milliamp hour batteries, two products that address one of the major concerns about their previous Danboard products, the form factor. These are super thin devices, so they're much more likely to be able to fit into things with the block and plate at about 0.5 inches and 0.4 inches thick respectively. Of course, they still feature all the same safety measures like overcharge protection that we're used to seeing on Chiro products, but do so at a size that is much easier to fit in your pocket. Oh, and they also want us to show off the uh, new Rebel Tech Danboard mini figure, which could add a bit of cute Danboard flair to your desk at work or uh, at home or your GTX Titan X. Isn't that adorable? Look at it go on there, it's so cute. Anyway, check out the link in the video description for more info on all of this good stuff from our friends over at Chiro. So, there you have it. The Titan X is, well, the fastest GPU in the world. Congrats, Nvidia, you've done it again. No wonder you were more focused on putting chips in cars at CES this year. At least then people will congratulate you for, you know, something different for a change. Well, even if you're bored of building fast graphics cards over and over again, I for one appreciate it, and as much as I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with this GPU, I'm looking forward even more to the next rabbit that you guys pull out of your hat. Keep on trucking, guys. So that's it, guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment, uh, hopefully on the forum, linked in the video description. If your feelings are more complicated than that, you want to interact with our community, also linked in the video description. We've got a place where you can give us a contribution. You can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. You can change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code. So when you buy your shiny new Titan X, we get a small kickback. That kind of thing helps us out a lot. Um, I think that's pretty much it, right? We have other channels, Channel Super Fun, Tech Quickie. Don't forget to subscribe, slash follow, and all that good stuff if you like our videos. See you next time.